Very proud of, of Mark Brunner, um, very hard worker. He has, over the years, he's developed a, a, a tremendous knowledge about the game. He's been willing to, to talk to anyone who knew anything about baseball and learn from them. And, uh, and now he has uh, achieved a, a lofty position in Europe. What is your title? Basically, you're running the academy program, right? The coordinator of Europe, the European development. That's which is a very important step for Major League Baseball to make. You have a person of Martin's caliber in that position. So, without further ado, Martin's going to talk about hitting today. I'm going to introduce Martin Brunner, Major League Baseball. Yes, uh, for some people that know me in the last 10 years or so. They haven't really seen me much as a hitting coach. I've been a hitting coach for a long time, but then I wanted to start managing. And uh, when you start becoming a manager, you, then you want to start winning. And when you want to win, you need to be a pitching coach. That's why in the last couple of years, I've, uh, I've molded more into a pitching coach than a hitting coach. Um, and, um, and now, after uh, a while, the pitching is kind of established, and then you s lose some games, with um, you know, with the good pitching and zero earned runs given up, and uh, so um, the attention is back a little bit more to the hitting these days, and um, and um, it's a good way if you made those different stages because you get the chance to look at uh, certain things with a different set of eyes. You know, if you're a pitching coach and you analyze hitters, you get you see different things than a hitting coach analyzes hitters. And um, and uh, going through Europe and um, and seeing national team events or domestic leagues um, as a more of a, hit, a pitching coach perspective, um, it was really interesting to see. I think we have some very very good coaches, um, especially in the tournament uh, kind of play we have in Europe. Um, I think we have some very good hitting coaches, but at the same time. There's a few things that I that I pick up as a as a more geared as a pitching coach that um, the the minute many hitters play a level up, they kind of fall apart. Well, that's in the nature because they haven't faced this level. But at the same time, a lot of times when the same hitter plays a level down, okay, for example, um, with the, if the Dutch national team um, faces a hitter that's below their normal hitting speed, they fall apart too for, for quite a while. And if you would put a major league hitter in the same situation, he has the capacity to adjust much quicker. Okay, so it's not an excuse, uh, well, it's, it's below hitting speed or I'm not playing uh, a level below and, um, and suddenly it doesn't work as good as, um, um, as it should be. On a level up, yeah, that's okay. And uh, and it asked um, and it raised a couple of questions to me. Why is this? At the same time, when we talk about uh, mechanical stuff or uh, player development, we need to set up the kids and not limit the kids. So even so, if we're breaking it down to real small, simple stuff, totally common sense, simple stuff, we gotta make sure the way we present it, we don't limit themselves. Uh, for the future. So there's always, you always have to double check with what's going on in the big leagues. Is what we teach at the grassroots level, does the same principle apply also in the big league level? If it does, even so it's sometimes it feels really complex, if it does, um, we're really geared on something that's really important. Um, and that's something we want to focus on and uh, simplifying this in this direction um, it's a lot easier to teach as well because you're more, you know, if you think about a uh, mechanic, we, we, earlier today somebody said we don't teach mechanics, it's movement and uh, there's a lot of truth to it but in the end um, 
it's uh, we need to teach principles. Okay? And out of the principle, a body, an individual, like an individuality, is gonna develop. So, um, so at the same time, this game has changed, and it has changed because it's very, very transparent. And there's some unbelievable smart guys. Um, um, and technology involved in the big league levels and also in the minor leagues to analyze the games. An uh, uh, organization like the Los Angeles Dodgers, they have a staff of almost a hundred people that only work in analyzing the game. It's uh, opponents, it's uh, in all categories, it's in sports science, it's in how to teach something. So the game is really elevating fast because people investing a lot of money in, in analyzing the game. And um, and um, I put a couple stats, you know, that are that, uh, this is still totally normal, even so it's much bigger than the the regular stats that we see on the box score. And um, and then I was focused since we have access to this information, I was really intrigued by a couple stats, um, you know, that fit to that fit to the mechanical principle of of hitting. So if you have a guy that has a tremendous reach, he makes contact with a lot of pitches out of the strike zone. But at the same time, he does not strike out much. He must be doing something right or something that's intriguing to me, what, what, why he can do that. Not everybody will can be able to do this. You know, you have, you have guys in the big leagues that say, Joey Votto, he will never swing at the bad pitch. But for a young guy, that skill is very difficult. At the same time, there's guys that have a high reach and still maintain a low K percentage. You know, what are these guys doing differently? Um, that's, that's interesting to me. I want to find out about why is he able to do that. Um, if you have a high reach, a low K percentage, you make a lot of hard contact and you show some power that, those are stats, those are numbers that I think that's a very interesting. And uh, I want to find out why the trust of the people in the big leagues who, who are very good, who show up in those categories, uh, what are they doing um, different to other guys? And that's intriguing to me because that's the part I want to teach to the younger guys. You know, if, if you're able to do this, that's to me a really good makeup. For, for, for a hitter. And uh, so the question is, what do we learn from those guys that stand out in those categories? And uh, try to break down it to, to uh, fundamentals. And one of the fundamentals, and a lot of discussion about it, um, is um, how the bat travels. What is the bat doing? Okay, we, we hear stats like launch angle and uh, hidden fly balls and all kinds of stuff, and I want to take a little closer look to it uh, because, as to my understanding, some misconception uh, and uh, and it's going in a to um, direction where I don't know um, if if young guys can apply to this or what's or what's behind it. You know, if you if um, launch angle is 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 big in the discussions, you see the home runs in 30% trajectory going off. And now you want to sw have a swing plane in that direction, and there's all kinds of stuff on the media as well. And um, so I want to um, put a spotlight on those things a little bit before we get into more details. Um, I got access to a nice research, and uh, it compared where are people standing in the batter's box, and uh, this is after after they land after toe touch or after heel plant, and where are they making contact in the strike zone? With the new technology, with the track man and these things, you know, you can basically see everything that happens. You know where the ball and where the player is in space. And you can measure velocities, all kinds of stuff. It's amazing and, uh, what data can be uh, gathered these days. And, um, and the interesting part, if you look at this, so Overall, as a cluster, as an average, everybody is with his front foot right about the top of home plate. Home plate being right here. And, um, and if you measure now where did they make contact and what was the results. 
and you can clearly see that um, in this part from here to here um, occurs the most line drives. And the contact points from here to up here and further out is the most home runs. If you make the contact points from here down here, it's more ground balls. And it has an, an, and, um, the velocity of ball off the bat um, is decreasing the further back you go uh, on home plate. So a lot of ground balls here in front of home plate, a lot of line drives, and home runs up here. Why is this? Why is this happening and, and, and what's behind it? Well, if you look at the bat pass, or I call it the hitting zone, the barrel of the bat always going to start above the hands. Then some point it's going to be below the hands. Then it's going to be on the height of the hand. And it's going to be above the hands again. So even so, those hands relatively work level in a straight line, the barrel of the bat is going to go underneath and travel up. And the, the, further, the further you let's go back to here, the further the barrel gets out, the more upswing plane it's going to have. So um, what I'm trying to say with this is the ball is coming down on a, 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 a is coming down down angle from the pitcher, and of course you want to match up your bat pass with the down angle. Okay, if it's going like this, that you make good contact is pretty difficult. But the but the angle to meet the down angle is not built by the body or by the hand pass. It's built by the bat pass. And that's why we can see if I hit the ball back on the plate, the barrel is more coming down still. That's why I hit a lot of ground balls down here. Okay? If I'm somewhere in this area, we see that we hit a lot of line drives. And if I hit the ball even more further out, where the bat is already traveling more upwards, I'm going to start lifting the ball more and hit more home runs or more fly balls. It's in the nature of a normal swing. But at the same time, those hands, those body structures, um, they're still uh, working very level. And, um, and something to set about here too, because the average lounge angle, making contact and ball off the bat in the major league still is only 11.4% or degrees actually, not percent, degrees. Okay, so home runs are hit a little bit steeper. Okay, a lot of, if you hit the ground ball, obviously it's going more down. So there's a big effect on where you make contact and what you're trying to do for the result. And, um, and if I go back to this, um, that also shows that most of the good contact is quite out in front. So it's a goal, you know, everybody heard, yeah, you need to get the bat head out in these words. There's a lot of truth to it, because you're trying to bring the barrel, your power, more so from the middle <laughs> out here than from, your, from, from the start position to the contact position. Most of the time we're focused from your, our load, making contact, but actually if you look at this, we should maybe be a little bit more geared on from contact on out to finish it. And um, so, so having an understanding, the hitting zone where my contact is from the point the barrel is underneath my hands till it reaches the height of my hands again. And where this, where this hitting zone sits, it's going to determine if I'm going to be able to generate power and if I'm going to have a lot of holes in my swing. If you imagine this, the swing plane where the barrel starts being here, if they, I move this back quite a bit, you know, if, I, if I'm, that's what a typical long swing looks like, if I start entering my hitting zone already <coughs> quite back here, I'm going to create a lot of holes because I'm not going to be able to maintain 
through the pitch, keeping that bat angle, and you're going to see the heads already roll early and, um, and coming out in a different way through, um, through your hitting zone. So I'd like to explain this a little bit to the players that, you know, if, if um, your hitting zone, you're entering the hitting zone more this way than back here as a visual. And I'm not talking mechanics so much, I'm really focused on the bat. And the bat, thinking about the bat is already an external focus. So I don't really have to worry so about much mechanics. But understanding it's not so much from here to here. It's more like from here to there. And, uh, and this chart really proves it. Um, it's already a very good approach. And you're going to clean up a lot of mechanics already just by visualizing um, where your bat enters the hitting zone and how far and how long you can get to the front. There's a small mechanical thing to it. It's the only mechanical thing I want to point out. And uh, here's an example video. Um, sitting zone kind of starts there, and he's really able to, the hands go pretty straight forward. And uh, as the barrel comes up, he creates a little lift, goes yard on this one. But the fundamental I want to point out, and that's um, it's, it's his hands. Everybody here probably, you got to want to be palm up, palm down, around in contact. But if you're able to maintain this palm up, palm down, also towards the end of the swing. And the end of the swing is basically, to me as a definition, this position. The end of the swing is when, or end of the heading zone is when the barrel reaches the height of the hands. After that, now deceleration starts. Okay, it's not, deceleration doesn't really start at contact. Um, or here in the middle, it actually ends up here. Also proven a little bit by that chart, because you see, that's quite far out in front of you. You see where your foot is. And most home runs are hit in this area, between nine and, uh, between nine and uh, 12 inches in front of the plate. So there's a goal that you really want to try to get your barrel out in front. And um, in order to maintain through the ball and making proper contact with the ball. This little detail here, palm up, palm down, and trying to maintain palm up, palm down, all the way to the end of your hitting zone, it's going to create a good batting average. Because you have to create a good um, plane to the ball a lot of time, a lot of good possibilities for, for good impact. So there's a little fundamental when you talk about the hands in this. And um, I found also out when you uh, work with kids now, and um, you know maybe on a soft toss or even on the tee or a live BP, and their results are all over the place. Um, and you stop the mechanical thought process or whatever you do, and you bring it back to just thinking of uh, working through the ball and maintaining palm up, palm down toward the end of the swing. You'll see their mistakes cleaning up right away. And, uh, and, and make him better contact. So it's a good, uh, it's a good focus point uh, for them to make sure they, on the end of their swing, I want to get there with palm up, palm down, and check a little bit hey, if, if I've already rotated. You don't have to be super anal about it with the more experienced the players, but if they struggle, a reminder about it cleans up a lot of bad contact right away. And then here's a couple pictures of guys um, on the end of their swing, how they still maintain the pretty good palm up, palm down, and swing to the front. For example, this is a uh, place uh, was a home run in the in the World Series, and if you sh check out his palm up, palm down, how long he's able to maintain it, um, you know, it gives it gives us a good feeling for that he has very a large area to make solid contact. He's not losing the swing zone very early. Another guy who demonstrates this um, uh, fundamental here, everybody does this, you know, not everybody is showing it that extreme. But it's definitely something I would focus on with the kids about palm up, palm down to the end of the swing. And understanding, hey, if I enter early, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull off, I'm gonna create a uh, not a lot of line drives over the infielder's head. <coughs> Let's 
see it here pretty well too. Always working through the ball to the front. The hands are not really making big angles or creating lounge angles. They're pretty straightforward. Uh, maybe even down and through, pretty level. And, uh, and the barrel, the barrel moving up, the further out you are, is kind of just uh, creating that jump off the bat. Another small little detail I want to uh, show here is everything we do to get the, the swing zone from here to here is how we start the hands. And the hands, you know, really have to go forward. The better they start forward, the better I'm going to be able to enter in my hitting zone and make proper contact. It's a very crucial thing. It's, um, we're going to see it later when we go through the drills what we can do about it, but that's definitely a focus point. So we understand that our swing is not sitting back here. We're trying to get it from the middle of the body to the front okay, to get to this. Uh, to those good results. And, um, and um, in the days that didn't have cameras, they were teaching from feel, and the swing always felt like, hey, I need to stay on top. Now we have a lot of cameras. It shows, hey, my back is actually the last part to the ball. I'm actually traveling up, but it's two different things. It's seeing something on the camera, what really happens, and the other part is more about controlling your body. And um, so if we neutralize it and think about at least from here to here as a pretty level swing, you know, I think we're going somewhere and putting us in a good position to make solid contact. And, uh, and a really crucial thing, especially over here in Europe, is those hands start straight forward. There's no going around or anything. I think you can see it pretty well on this, on this swing. Everything is geared up to swing to the front. Okay. So um, um, to repeat this on, 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 on that part, um, where do we enter as a visual? Where do I, or for a coach watching a player, where does that bat go underneath his hands? Is it back here or is it a little bit further out? If it's further out, you're creating a better bat pass um, to be able to um, hit good pitching. And uh, there was a little fundamental to it. Hey, once you're in that zone, try to keep palm up, palm down for a long time. Okay, so you're not creating creating holes in your swing because you do this kind of number. And um, and we try to maintain with your hands, with your approach, very flat. Okay, because of the barrel coming up automatically creates the lounge angle. Okay, we try to swing to the front. And uh, if you think of the where I stand for a middle pitch. It should be in front of my foot. Okay, a lot of times you see guys putting up the tee right at their foot, maybe inside of their foot and trying to hit a middle pitch. So you're not really creating that going to the front, hitting to the front, and, and your swing plane is quite back here. And that's when the velocity picks up, it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty difficult. And um, um, in order to get there, I want to stress today also on a couple fundamentals. And, um, and especially on the load. What is the load? When you talk about hitters, and 100 hitters look 100 times different when you talk about the load. So usually you would think if it's everything is different with everybody, it's not a very good point or a good point to start <coughs> teaching about hitting. So uh, my question to you is, how do you find a load? What's a load? What's, what is the load to you? Maybe you want to throw some, some things out that come up to you when you think about your load and your swing. Shifting weight to the back side. Shifting weight to the back side. Negative movement. Negative movement. What else? What, what, what makes a good load? Timing. Timing. And the floor is in the front and the shoulder. Say it again? Twisted. The floor and the shoulder. Okay, twist it, twist it, okay, separate something. What else makes a good load to you? Or what's happening in a load? What's good. actually happening in a load? Good balance. Balance. Well, the obvious thing is, is 
that we're going to load, have to load this back leg. You know, and we also and it's not just the back leg; it's also the hips that work. So we have to kind of uh, load the, the leg and the hip. Let's see how people do this. There's a typical load, the bigger one, so we can see some stuff. Okay, yeah, we see some negative movement. He's moving back, but he's geared. It's tough to see on this clip very strongly on the inside of the foot. So loading the back leg is loading the inside of the foot. And yes, it's loading. I mean, it's a why you can do. I mean, you just try to store energy here, okay? And yeah, I have the back. You, you get the feeling from the drill. We look at it from the back step drill. Okay, now yeah, now I feel this leg. Now this leg is loaded. Okay, so we got loading of the leg. And the second part is not only the leg, you also have to load the hip. Take a look at this guy. Can you see it? Oh, it turns back a little bit. You mentioned it a little bit. Okay, so I load the leg, but also something is going here. Well, this joint is closing off a little bit. That's loading the hip. We're loading the foot and loading the hip. See the groin, got a little bit smaller here. He's in his legs, loading to the inside. Here from the front. See how he closes off a little bit, shows a little bit more of his back pocket. Because those two things are happening. You have to load the back leg and you have to close the hips. That's the second mechanism of loading. He's moving back to load the inside of the foot and he's closing up the front hip a little bit. Okay. If you look closely, he's just stood up a little bit. It's his way of loading the back leg. Closing off the hips a little bit. So it's storing it's not about generating, it's about storing some power. And if you look closely, there's a little bit more than just the leg and the, the back leg and the hip loading. There's also something happening with the hands. And uh, you also want to load the hands or the wrists. And in order to do this, you just take the bat and bring it forward a little bit like this okay now the back leg is loaded we already loaded the hips now we know to load the hands and it looks like this and if you look closely it's not that much I mean the tilt is quite big but the angle here in this in this um, bottom hand is not much more than 90 degrees that's something we're gonna find on a lot of people so we talked about loading the back leg, and we talked about loading the back hip, and now we need to load the upper body, but more so the wrists. They have strong wrists when we get to contact. There's another guy, and uh, you can see there's the same this this tipping. It's a lot of words for it, um, but it's very important to load the hands and to generate some bat speed. It's not too much over 90 degrees, even so the bat really centers over his head, almost. Another guy, you see how he loads the bat, she gets all excited about it. And so loading the back leg, loading the hip, loading the hands is already a pretty good start. Even this guy. When he was younger, can you see how he brings the head up, the bat head in, and then he's loaded and can go. Now we have this all loaded, and that's part of the reason for this next detail coming up. Well, I said I see hitters that fall apart when they play a level up. Well, that's understandable, but there's a lot of hitters that also fall apart when they play a level down, because now you brought yourself in a good position, a strong position, you load it, <coughs> but now you have to keep that load till you unleash the line. 
So you here you load it up, and you have to keep it, and um, in the end, till the front foot lands. And that's why most swings break down. That you have to maintain your load all the way till your foot hits. I mean, if I over exaggerate, you know, and I've already lose this, this, and this before I land. That's not gonna, there's no power left. And I can't really generate bed speed on it. So it's a little detail, but it is, to me, it means a lot that you understand that you have to hold the load till your front foot hits the ground. And uh, if I slow this down for you, he's finished with his load already right there. and he holds it to the right there. See the back foot is completely still on the ground, the heel is still on the ground, but now it takes over into the swing and the, tour, the rotation. But that part right here, being finished, it's all a rhythm, but he's completely finished. See the hip slightly turned in, pressure on the inside of the leg, he can hold the load, he can hold it, hold it, hold it till he lands, <coughs> and then he just launches off. And that's a mechanism or a detail, I think, that's uh, strongly overlooked. So if you look at the first view, it looks like he's just diving to the front. Right? And, but he can't do it because he's already loaded and he's just waiting to trigger it and, and, and unleash it. And this is why he can tremend has tremendous power because he's not lunging, losing his losing his load and lunging into the pitch and have nothing left and have all kinds of movement, he can actually, because he finished his load, he can actually be <coughs> aggressive and take momentum with him to help him rotate and hit through the ball. So this understanding of, uh, of holding the load till the front foot lands, I think is uh, very crucial. And if you, the better you are in this, the easier it is to adjust to the timing speed with different pitches. <coughs> you know, you got this guy coming in, throwing 70 miles an hour, and uh, and yesterday you just faced 90. If you play a European Championship, that plays every day uh, because uh, um, there's the, the range between the teams uh, is quite big. You play the, the the team that just moved up into your league having not strong pitching and you have the dominant team and one night you play this guy, the next day you play the other guys, the adjustments are going to be a lot easier. Learned how to hold your load and make adjustments. And the other part is that you really can start creating some momentum for your swing to get to the front. shows well how he works to the front. Okay. There's a little negative movement, but those hands, they don't do much. It's pretty much straightforward. He loads up, goes straight forward. Okay. Has a lot of momentum he can take with him, but he's really good at holding his load. Another aspect is on the load, is where is my move, where's my weight going? Now I'm already, my load, I'm already on my way to toe touch. And, um, and uh, this is where in practice, you know, we can start uh, having a body system. Because usually your body goes where your eyes are. So if I'm thinking, if I'm thinking outside, 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 my body will start going outside. Once my body starts doing this, you know, it's going to be very difficult to react to a different pitch, even if I see it early. So, yes, there are ways to cheat in the game. And you see it early, and you know what you do. So yes, you, you might cheat. But if you cheat in practice, you have no chance in adjusting in the game. So it's really important to keep the momentum in the right direction and, uh, and what is straightforward. And I have a couple examples for it. Um, this guy right now, see where the ball is? is coming in on him. 
and he is his whole and everything he has is geared on what what his eyes see right now. And uh, this ball happens to travel to the other side of the plate, and he still maintains um, good balance, and he's in the right spot. And because he's not cheating and he's not opening up, he has a chance at least to foul this pitch off because his momentum went straight. I slow this one down for you as well. If you look closely here, you can still see in his body, in his eyes, how he's geared for a middle away pitch. It still looks like, yeah, it's a middle away pitch and he's geared for it. He can see it. If you look where his foot lands, he didn't cheat himself. It went straight forward. And because he didn't cheat, now he can make the, now this ball is coming back to the middle, to the inside half. He has no problem in making the adjustment. And, uh, and that was the first pitch of the game two in the World Series. And the ball was hit a long ways. Okay? For him, able to do this was because he understood his load, he kept it, and he made it. Even so, his eyes looking outside, he was able to go straight forward with his approach to the ball. Okay. Huge hit in the World Series. And if you look at his feet, he always strays away from it a little bit. And he was challenged with some really good pitches. He's a young player. Um, and, um, but he was able to recognize that fastball away and uh, drill it into the, uh, and double in the gap against the shift. And if you look at his feet, let me slow it down for you, I think. You know, he's still, see, see, he's not going over, he's still maintaining his normal approach, foot down, now he makes the adjustment. And that's what I just said, it's, uh, especially for practice, it's huge. Normal approach, foot down, now he adjusts to the pitch he's looking for. Okay? And this way he stays honest and has a chance to adjust and not be too narrowed down for one zone. Actually, when he recognizes the pitch early, his play coverage is going to be a lot bigger. Look where his foot is going down. A middle in, high pitch for home run. And this guy nails the outside corner. There's a lot of adjustment to it. See the back foot kind of kicking out a little bit. But if you compare where his foot is down, it's in the, almost in the same spot. So he didn't cheat himself. He stayed honest with his slow, with everything he does, and made the adjustment after the foot was down. And uh, it's a great piece of hitting. It's a pitcher's pitch, if you think about it. And he was able to really um, get there and was in a position to make that adjustment because his load was, um, was done correctly. Okay, so I put a last little thing here on the end that also uh, is important for the load. Your head will travel a little less than your hip. Okay, you need to go forward. Nobody's strong enough to stand still and hit it out. You need to go forward, but if your center of gravity is doing this more than your head, you're in a pretty good position. You're always going to find yourself behind the ball to make contact and drive this ball. So a lot of other things about a swing. I just reflect uh, with one, one slide here on rotation. It's a lot talked about, but I only put it here. Um, yeah, this comes pretty much together, a lot of rotation. But after the rotation, more important, a great swing plane, a good bat pass to the front, remaining palm up, palm down, also after contact. and. Uh, and there's a lot of successful players from this World Series that executed that skill. Taking it into practice, it's going to go rather quick. In practice, you have to be creative. Okay? You just don't want to hit everything off the tee and explain everything off the tee. Okay? You want to build in competition. But, um, so, um, so with the drills, that's just one solution of a couple of drills I show you, 
but you have to be really creative about it, how to make it more difficult, how to make it more competitive. Um, don't think too much in progressions. You think, I need to learn stage two, um, then stage three, stage four. You can go to stage 10 and back to uh, stage one. Um, you know, this creating a little chaos in your, in your practice this way with over-challenging and under-challenge and it's, your learning curve is going to be really steep. So try to be really creative in your practices. Um, and, um, but it's very important for the player to understand the pass of the bat, what I call hitting zone. And he needs to be able to read results. What's happening? Where did I make contact? What's the result? That's going to fix most of the problems. In order to work so on uh, some of the um, fundamentals we talked about, I want to show you a couple of drills. Let's see why oh, it's not starting. Okay, the step back drill, old drill, is it gives you a good feeling for loading the back leg. Another drill, you know, see how he uh, stands on the line and now he really closes, has to close that hip and then move forward to hit the ball. Um, next drill, I make him touch the the, the knob of the bed with, with, with the leg. Yes, you have a big load, you need to be loading, but the whole mechanism, how it feels from the first previous to drill is really strong. Okay? I like big movement in, in those drills because, see, now I even have to do the same drill, but he's with his bed even behind because it creates a good um, awareness where your body is. It slows things down, you still try to get you have to hold your load. Um, there's a lot of good body feedback and it's pure. It's not hidden in no movement. <coughs> your flaw is still there, you, nobody can see it anymore. It's not real. Especially with the young players, why are we slowing him down already? When he gets to the pro level, they can, maybe there's too much movement, let's narrow it down a little bit. But the movement stays real. So uh, in a practice situation, um, create big movement. Then, um, you know, for, for a little bit better feel of what the back leg does to load this, you can do all kinds of stuff. This is a little drill just to over accelerate on holding the load. You have to avoid the trampoline effect. If I can avoid the trampoline effect, I do exactly what I need to do to hold my load till my foot lands. If I'm good at this, I'm going to be very good at adjusting and seeing the baseball. Okay, this is the same thing, holding the load, avoiding the trampoline effect to work through and, and to, the front, to the front. And maybe little details like the little helps, combining stuff, you know, this is just off the tee, but you can go, go nuts in your creative, creativity and try to do all kinds of stuff about it. This is a drill for the, for the loading the hands. Um, you can see that, I mean, you get a lot of feedback with this long freaking thing if you release your hands early and create a long swing and maybe even hit the ground and can't even get to the front. For sure, if you don't stay here and work to the front, you have no chance maintaining palm up, palm down. And uh, so we can do a drill. If you look closely, he went, he did his load first. It's just a drill um, to feel. So he did his load first and then he tosses the ball and tries to hit it with this long thing. It's really difficult, but the body feedback you get from it is pretty tremendous. You don't have to explain the drill to the kid. They feel it right away. And uh, over acceleration on it, you know, you're moving forward, you're finding your load, see how he starts his hand, and, um, and if you open up here, if you can't hold your load very good back here, you have no chance hitting it from the tee, but this way, um, you have to move your hands forward. It's an over acceleration, but the body feedback again you get from the drill is pretty good. And, uh, and to work from there to the front, keeping palm up, palm down. Um, drill I stole from a friend sitting here. Um, works really good too. You got that feeling, no, I can't do it here. I need to bring it to the front uh, for the top hand pass. Uh, just throw the frisbee a little bit. It's the same movement. And you get a lot of good feeling from what your body is doing. 
And just by giving him the task, he's going to figure it out himself the way he's built to do it. And, uh, and all kinds of drills that you can build into, into it, give the feeling of rotation and working through the ball. But it ends up, in the end, trying to get the barrel out in the zone and, uh, and uh, trying to maintain a nice fat pass with your body behind it. Okay? And the key to me is, and that's why I spend an excessive amount of time on the lotus, that's where I see the first breakdown. And if that already breaks down, you're going to be teaching and solving a lot of symptoms in your swing. Oh, this flies out and, and all kinds of stuff. Okay? And most of the time it's just that they don't really feel what it means to load and keep the load uh, till your head, till you land to maintain a nice bad pass. Okay? That's all I got for you.